I know a lot of you out there are familiar with human vital signs like pulse rate and temperature, but if you're a horse owner, it is extremely important to know your horse's vital signs. And that's why I have brought in my expert, Dr. Annie Renzetti. She's a state veterinarian here at Harrington Raceway. And let's just start out with why is it important for horse owners to know this? Well, if your horse is sick, one of the ways you're going to know is if their vital signs are abnormal. But also when you call your veterinarian to report that your horse is sick, you want to be able to tell them at least the pulse, temperature, and respiration rate because it will help them gauge how bad things are and how quickly they need to drop what they're doing and get, get to your farm. Right. Let's just give a little recognition here. We've got Just a Jolt, one of our open pacers here at Harrington. So he's going to be our guinea pig, okay? <laughs> Don't worry about it, big guy. Okay, uh, so where should we start out? Let's start out with temperature. Um, the best and only way to get a horse's temperature is rectally. Um, you can use any thermometer you buy at a regular pharmacy, a human, human type thermometer. Um, you'll wanna use some sort of lubrication or something. A lot of people say Vaseline, but if you don't have Vaseline, a little spit in the hand will do just fine. So anyway, you want to be careful. A lot of horses don't like necessarily having their rear ends messed with. So you just want to make sure you're careful. And just stand to the side in case they kick. You want to make sure you get it in far enough that it's not just on the surface. These beep, thank God. Yeah, I was going to say, you've got one of the, the beepy kind, which, you know, I use for my kids. Exactly. You know? like, and that's so convenient. Two separate thermometers, the one in the house for the kids, the one in the barn for the horses. And then <laughs> oh, I use, that's good to know. use their tail to clean it. And he is currently 99.9, .9, which is a normal temperature. Normal for me, the range that I gauge as normal is 99.5 to 101 even. So... 99.5 to 101 even. Okay. So he's right in, right in normal. Okay. Now if you bring your horse in from the field and it's a 100 degree day and they galloped up to meet you, it wouldn't be abnormal for him to be a little elevated for a short period of time. So you gotta take into account the environment and what they've been doing. A horse coming off of the racetrack tonight will be 102, 102 and a half when they come in tonight all sweaty and, and worked up. So you gotta sort of take into account, but he's just standing nice and quiet, so that's, that's normal for him. Oh, that's great. I'm glad you mentioned that as well. Yeah, because th there's definitely got to be a, a range of high and low depending on what their activity is. Definitely. Uh, so, uh, so the next thing we want to look at would be heart rate. And there are a couple different ways. If you don't have your handy dandy stethoscope, which a lot of people have, but a lot of people don't have, um, you can get their heart rate kind of like you would a person, you know, in their jugular or their carotid artery. Horses have a carotid too, and it's right along their jawbone, and you run your fingers along and you can kind of feel it pop under there and so you want to rest right where where you felt the pop and it's just like taking a pulse on a person whether you would do it on their wrist or your jaw, you can take their pulse there. If you have your handy dandy stethoscope it is infinitely easier to feel it and count it with your stethoscope and you want to go on the left side because their heart is located a little bit more to the left and you take your listening bell and you want to put it right up underneath their elbow. So pretty far forward, you, more forward than you would think. Normal heart rate for a horse standing at rest is 36 to 42 beats per minute. And the easiest way to count that is to count it for 15 seconds and then multiply by four. Sometimes hard to stand here for an entire minute. He's being really good, but a lot of times they're not amenable to standing for an entire minute. Um, if their heart rate is above 60, there's definitely a problem for a standing horse. If they're above 80, that's a significant problem because heart rate goes up with pain. So they're in some, usually that means they're in some kind of pain. The heart rate's gonna be the big key for your vet. That's gonna be what they're gonna really base their assessment off of over the phone until they can get there as to how bad things are you know and typically you're calling for like a sickness kind of a thing you know like a colic that's where they're going to want to know the the heart heart and respiration rate okay on on What's to the next, next? Uh, respiration rate so how fast they're breathing in and out horses typically breathe 8 to 12 times per minute so relatively slow um, and the easiest way to watch that when they're not you know excited or galloping 
is just to watch their rib cage, which can be a challenge if they're pawing and moving and whatnot. The other way is just to hold your hand right in front of their nose, and you can feel when they exhale. If oh, yeah, all right, all right. And you'll want to also watch, are they labored breathing? Are they having any trouble? Are they making any sounds? You know, I mean, that sort of thing is another, you know, thing to watch for while you're doing this. A big horse. <laughs> he is being very good. Very proud of you. So uh, another thing you want to watch out for is hydration status. So how hydrated are they? And the quick and easy test on that one is to get where their skin on their neck and you pull up a little flap of skin and it should snap right back. So that went back pretty quick. A dehydrated horse, when you pull it up and you let go, it'll sit there, tented, like that. The only other thing to kind of look for or be able to report back to your veterinarian, if your horse will let you, good boy, is you want to look at their gums and see what color they are. They should be a nice pink color, like his. And then you can take your thumb and you push hard on them and they go white for just a second and then go back to pink and you want him to go back to pink within two to three seconds. If it takes longer than that, that means that he's not, not perfusing as well, so the blood's not circulating as well, because what you're doing is you're pushing the blood out of the capillaries and then letting it re-come re in. So that's, it's called capillary refill time, and that's another thing that will tell you if things are amiss. If it's any greater than two or three seconds, there's probably something, something not right. Okay. What about like, you know, a lot of times um, horse owners talk about the horses colicking mm -hmm. uh, and for someone that's watching and doesn't really know what colicking is because obviously a horse is upset and in distress when that happens and that's a, a big reason why horse owners call the vets. So tell us about colicking and, you know, the Colic signs. just means abdominal pain for the most part. It's just the horse isn't feeling well and it can be from any number of things, from a twisted gut to gas in their bowels from a kidney stone to, because a horse can't say, it hurts right here and I think it's my liver. Anytime their abdominal cavity is hurting, there's sort of telltale signs. They'll very often look at their belly, they'll paw, although he's not colicking, he's just being impatient. <laughs> they'll paw, a lot of times they'll be sweating, um, getting up and down, rolling. Right. Um, very, one of the big, big, reasons to call your vet is if you've got a horse that usually eats grain and hoovers it up and all of a sudden you dump dinner and the horse doesn't eat grain that's a big sign horses love love to eat and if a horse suddenly won't eat usually that's colic yeah i actually read somewhere uh, that there's no such thing as the excuse of my horse isn't hungry like horses just eat and they will eat until they cannot eat anymore. So, right, yep. if a horse isn't eating, again, I mean, it's not only about the vital signs, but it's about knowing what kind of behavior your horse normally has and uh, whether they're kind of acting wacky, you know, at the time and, yep. and um, you know, making sure that you know about that. So you can get on the, get on the horn and call your vet. Large, complicated animals with many things that can go wrong, but for the most part, things go right and it's just important to know when, when they are going wrong. And knowing what's normal is important to know when things aren't normal. Right, so right, right. Hopefully this helps. Yes, it does, it does. Because these are like children, you know? Oh. They, can't, they can't tell you what's wrong, you know? Like, uh, so you're, you're sort of like a, a pediatrician in a kinda, way. Kind of, sort of. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, sort of. Cool. Thank you for being on the show. You and bet. for uh, telling us all about the different vital signs. I, I learned a lot today, I appreciate it. There you go.